The dumbbell bench press is a classic lift for upper body strength and is one of the best ways to develop the muscles of the chest, shoulders, and triceps. And in today's video, I'll show you how to perform the dumbbell bench press for optimal strength and muscle gains, how to avoid some common mistakes that could increase your risk of injury. Plus, I'll show you a ton of my favorite dumbbell bench press variations that you can use to spice up your chest workouts. Now, before we talk about the bench press itself, we have to get those weights into position safely. Place the dumbbells on the ground at the foot of your bench. Take a seat at the edge and directly in the middle of the bench and row the weights up one at a time, resting them vertically on top of the knees. You can also deadlift the dumbbells and rest them on top of the legs as you sit. Just make sure that you're aligned with the center of the bench. With a simultaneous kick and curl, pop the dumbbells up one at a time to the shoulders and roll to your back with tight abs. Bring your hands down to the base of the chest to achieve vertical forearms. Plant the feet flat, push the knees out, and tighten the glutes. This will give you a solid foundation for stability and leg drive. Hold the shoulder blades down to engage the lats and pull the sternum up and forward to create an arch in the upper back. Inhale first into the belly to reinforce a strong core brace and then into the chest, inflating the rib cage. Every good rep begins with a strong methodical setup. So practice and refine these steps in every workout so that you can feel safe and confident when it comes time to increase the weights. Maintain total body tightness and exhale as you press the dumbbells. The weights will follow a subtle arc back towards the head before settling in the lockout directly over the shoulders. Slowly lower the dumbbells back to the starting position, following that same arc back towards the hips. Imagine rowing the weights towards you to engage the lats. Press and exhale once the dumbbells are about halfway up through to the lockout. You can exhale through the nose on easier reps and through the mouth with a power breath or grunt on the harder reps. Now let's take a look at some of the most common dumbbell bench press mistakes that are often at the root of shoulder pain and plateaus in hypertrophy and strength of the chest. The first mistake is losing your total body tightness. When this happens, you'll often lose your arch position. The chest caves in and the shoulders roll forward. Remember to always keep your glutes, abs, lats, and even your grip on the dumbbells super tight. Now here's a bonus tip from a powerlifting seminar on how to maximize your arch. I know Will Smith is maybe a touchy subject. Does anybody remember the hitch tip that he gave to uh, Kevin, what's his name, when he was going in for the kiss? 90-10. You go in 90, let her come in 10. That's what we're gonna do with the bench press. 90%, kiss the bar, press. That's something that you can practice. Down 90, raise 10 to meet the bar, and launch it. And then over the course of time, that, that won't even be 90-10. You'll just automatically ramp that arch up as you're coming down. So instead of it being two steps, it'll just be one seamless motion. Yep. Make sense? Mistake number two is simply going too heavy too often. The dumbbell bench press is inherently more unstable than the bench press version. This reduces your ability to produce maximal force. Therefore, the most effective application for the dumbbell bench for strength and hypertrophy is with moderate to lighter weights performed in the 10 to 20 rep range. Mistake number three is improper elbow alignment. Some lifters mistakenly think they have to approximate the straight line of a barbell with the dumbbells. But with free weights, this wide flared position puts unnecessary strain on the shoulders. Aim for somewhere around 45 degrees of elbow flare. Not only is this safer for the shoulders, but it's also more effective for targeting the chest by aligning with the muscle fibers themselves. And now with the fundamentals in place, here are nine dumbbell bench press variations for you to try out in your workouts. 
First is an alternating press where we hold one arm straight in the lockout position while the other side presses as usual. The flip side to that variation is holding the static arm in the bottom position. Be sure to keep proper lat and pec engagement to hold the isometric tension. The single arm bench press makes for a great core and stability challenge. Keep the non-working arm tight and held in the lockout position. Push the dumbbells together in a parallel grip for the squeeze press. This one really targets the pecs through shoulder adduction. Maintain a steady squeeze pressure through the entire range of motion. A great but often overlooked option is the reverse grip bench press. Turning the wrist towards your head creates a more narrow, tucked elbow position, a lower touch point on the torso, and an easier time with deeper range of motion. At least one study also suggests this grip position increases activation of the upper pectoral fibers. The paused bench press is a valuable exercise for any lifter. By holding the bottom position for three to five seconds, you're getting extra time under tension where you need it the most, in the hardest, most stretched position. Don't simply hang on to the weights. Isometrically tense the muscles as hard as you can. Imagine you're pressing up against an immovable object. Tempo presses involve a deliberately slow eccentric or lowering phase, usually three to five seconds. The concentric phase may be performed slow as well, but powerlifters should use caution so as not to compromise their bench press technique. Obviously, tempo reps can be combined with a pause at the bottom for an especially heinous press variation. Finally, we can change the angle of the bench itself. The incline bench press is a classic way to target the upper chest and add a challenge to any of these press variations. The decline bench generally targets more of the lower pecs and triceps. The decline angle can be pretty awkward and also removes the stability you get from grounding your feet. For these reasons, I typically suggest only doing declines with a spotter. When it comes to programming the dumbbell bench press, I suggest sticking with moderate weights and working in the 10 to 20 rep range. Again, your ability to produce force against the dumbbells is far lower than it would be for the barbell. So it doesn't make as much sense to aggressively pursue heavier weights. Sure, progressive overload is still important, but prioritize increasing volume and working through more challenging variations. The dumbbell bench press is a staple for any strength athlete, and it pays to refine your technique in this lift to truly maximize your upper body pressing strength. And speaking of upper body pressing strength, if you got a lot out of this video, you're definitely gonna wanna check this one out.